morning, good morning, good morning. It is 6 a.m. in the Midwest. Captain's log, 6 a.m. Monday morning. <laughs> it's about to go down, guys. So today we're getting concrete for the root cellar. And uh, just to share with you how I'm feeling, it's kind of mixed emotions, right? When you do a project like this, um, this isn't the end of the project by any means, but it's the end of this stage. So it, there's a little bit of anxiety. You know, I've been up since five o'clock. I've been out here double checking, checking and making sure everything was secure, that we didn't leave any boards unfastened, making sure all that my tie downs are good, the rebars uh, elevated a little bit. Uh, some of you guys were asking about the uh, venting. Um, we do have a vent in this left corner north facing because we want the cold air to come from the north and then it comes in and then we'll vent out on the south side um, on the opposite end and we'll do that later because we have a stairwell in there and you guys will see how this will come together uh, no problem and we also put in um, the pipe for the water because I'm gonna have water in this building from, from our cisterns and we also put in a drain because I'm actually even going to have a shower in that building as well. So hopefully uh, everything goes smooth today with the uh, concrete, which I have no doubts pretty much that it will go smooth. Uh, but you never know, man. You do things like this and uh, something can just come up. But we have, I basically hired out the concrete because, you know, we can do a little bit of stuff around here. But concrete's kind of heavy duty work and a project this size. Uh, me and Greg were thinking about tackling it, but I just said, hey, man, we'll just spend the extra money and be safe about it. So we've got three concrete guys. They've been doing concrete for like 30 years. Uh, so we'll have a nice finish. <laughs> Unlike the outdoor kitchen, if you missed that video uh, playlist, it's right there. Unlike the outdoor kitchen, we'll have a nice finish on the bottom of this, uh, you know, for this deck here. And everything should go really, really smooth. So I'll catch up with you guys in a second. Or actually, hang tight and start watching the concrete pour. So that was awesome. The pump truck showed up right on time. It was really cool. The arms stretched out. That thing was huge. Had a great big span and great big long arm on it. I knew it was coming. I mean, we scheduled it to come, but I had no idea like how far it could reach. And it was a little bit overkill, but I think at the end, you know, we'd have enough drama kind of going on and I wanted it to be um, as safe as possible. Uh, so we didn't have any blowouts. And uh, with those guys that were doing the concrete were here, just wanted to make sure everybody was safe. And so it cost me more money to do it other than having it uh, just use a chute to put in. But it was well worth it. It was a much more controlled uh, disbursement of the concrete into the walls. Because this is called a monolithic pour. This is when you're pouring the walls and the deck or the ceiling all at the same time. So it really closes it in and makes it tight. So she came here, it was pretty cool. I didn't really notice her, she was up in the truck and then I was doing something and I heard her talking and I turned around and I'm like, whoa. It was a girl that was driving this uh, big rig and everything and she was the total uh, operator and actually at the end, the guys uh, in the concrete crew said that she was one of the best pump operators that they had ever worked with. And her and her husband actually own the company, so it's a family run business. So all that stuff's kind of neat, we, we really like that stuff. So we got that there, then the trucks started coming in, the cement trucks, one by one. Uh, there was a total of four trucks that showed up to deliver the concrete.
they started pouring the concrete and the walls and what we did was we do about two or three feet at a time and then we would go to another section of the wall and we would just kind of keep working our way around the wall until it got to the top <laughs> Then when we got up to the top with the concrete, uh, to right before we started the ceiling, or in this case the floor now, the only problem that we had was that the ICF foam wasn't really uh, supported in any way. So then the top started blowing out um, and, and kind of coming apart, you know, like separating from the underneath the forms. So we had to quick, we had to grab a bunch of two by fours and scab the whole top together to hold those pieces in line so that would keep the concrete inside. Concrete guys worked really hard. They did a really good job finishing off the surface. Um, everything I would say kind of went pretty smooth, um, just for a few little problems that we had. The pump truck thing was pretty awesome. And again, it did cost us more money, but I did that just to be more cautious. You know, uh, it was the first time that I think any of those guys, even Greg, had done a monolithic pour where we did the walls and the ceiling all at the same time. And so I thought the pump truck would be much more controlled and advantageous for us to do uh, during the project. So hopefully you guys have liked this series up till here. Um, we really have done a good job uh, showing you guys all the different steps, some of the things that can go wrong, and then how to overcome them. So I'm hopeful that you guys are getting some nuggets from that and uh, taking the advice. And maybe if you set up your project, uh, you'll be able to do a good job up front. So you'll have a nice smooth pour as well. Also, in this video, if you have any questions about the build, except for the cost, because I'm not there yet, um, but I will, uh, in a future video, let you guys know about how much this costs. But I will tell you that it's not as much as you think. And we did spend an extra $600 um, on the pump truck, which is a really good price, and um, a few more extra dollars here and there that you, you, know, you might, if, you, if you're really good with concrete or something, you might save. And then of course we hired the three guys to come in and do the finish work on top of this because I learned my lesson from the outdoor kitchen. <laughs> so I saved up uh, and made sure that I had the money allotted uh, to pay those guys so they could do a really nice, good job. And uh, actually we talked to them about trying to fix the outdoor kitchen. So if we do that, you can stay tuned for that video and we'll teach you guys how to fix a screwed up concrete job. <laughs> I love it. Um, also, don't forget, leave your questions down below. Greg's going to come back up uh, sometime later next week after the conference and whenever he can fit it in. We've got to take the forms off on the outside of the building 
and do the waterproofing down below and uh, that's when we'll answer your questions so leave them in this video if you have any questions at all about the build also uh, just like uh, you guys saw the garden video yesterday we got three inches of rain well guess where all that rain went <laughs> yeah so we got to keep it 100 you know we we're always up front with you guys we're telling you what's going on uh, we did finally lose um, a little piece that was hanging on underneath the stairs there so now we lost about half the dirt going over to the stairs I really would not like to see any more uh, dirt come off of there <laughs> um, and then all the water just came kind of down because uh, that part broke off so that tarps just hanging over so all the water just drained down in there and so we got a couple inches of water in the bottom of this pit so I'll get that pumped out and of course we had a couple of more pieces of the side fall in which is no big deal because now all I have to do is scrape the foundation so we can get our waterproofing in and then once we do that um, we'll be able to just start filling it in so really we're out, we're in the clear now I just wouldn't uh, don't want to see any more of the underneath the deck kind of a road away but it should be pretty quick of, about us filling it up I'm gonna plan on filling it up a couple feet at a time letting it settle in um, if it rains and stuff that's even better uh, because that'll help smush all the dirt out so you won't have a bunch of clumps in there so it'll really kind of reduce the settling um, and the reason why all the water is inside of the um, building here is because the water is coming off of this hill here and then it's going down and then it's seeping underneath uh, where we need to do our waterproofing so it's no big deal we'll get that pumped out everything's going to be fine and this is really really a good start uh, to what we want to do building this root cellar for our off-grid food storage and then also on top of it i have a really good series coming for you guys so stay tuned for that um, as always, thanks for watching our videos. We had a really a lot of fun taking you guys along with us on this build and hopefully like I said you got a lot of good tips and um, And just enjoyed it, you know uh, as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you guys So we'll see you guys on the next video And if you're in the area of Hannibal, Missouri, or if you know you want to take a little quick drive We still have tickets available for the homesteading life conference Hannibal, Missouri August 12th and 13th 2018 Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.